Hello everybody and welcome to the Project Spark side scroller tutorial. Um, today I'm going to show you guys how to create a uh, side scroller in Project Spark because it's one of the most commonly asked uh, questions that I get and I'm you know I've been known to create a side scroller or two myself. So what we've done here is we've created an empty world all right using the default character okay first thing I'm going to do actually is I'm going to disable the ambient track here so you guys don't have to listen to this all right and now you can see here we we'll start it up and everything is just with the defaults right okay we got our follow camera we're running around no big deal next thing Alright, so the first step of this is to set the actual camera itself. So we're going to delete the line that says follow, cam follow camera. Alright, and then we're going to immediately add in a boom camera. So this boom camera, we're going to give it a distance of 15. All right. Realize this distance can be whatever you want. It depends on how far you want the camera away from the main character, okay? So we're going to set it with distance of 15. We're going to pitch it. And I personally, for side-scrollers, I'm a big fan of a pitch value of 10. However, this you can change as well, right? You can, depending on how high you want the camera to be angled at the, per the player. Okay, so a true side scroller, it sh this pitch should technically be zero, um, but any any value between zero and say twenty uh, is is a valid uh, valid value there. So you can play with that for whatever your your taste is. And then finally, after pitch, we're gonna go with our yaw, and the yaw this really needs to be zero. And what this does is this sets the camera to be placed at the actual side of the character. Okay? So if we take a look at this, we start it up. And here we have our camera. Alright? Now the problem is, of course, I can move in this direction and this direction and go all over the place, right? So we don't have our side scroller just yet. But we're getting there. Alright? The next thing we're going to do is we're going to lock the character onto the x-axis and this this prevents him from moving off so in order to do this we're gonna do once and this is only gonna occur once and we're gonna I always use a global value here global oh geez global uh, we're gonna create a new number variable called locked axis okay and this is going to be equal to the character's initial position oh, position x okay so now after we've got our initial position x we're going to set the character's position x position on the x axis oops uh, I should have undone that, but that's fine. All right, is going to be constantly equal to this value. All right. So what this does is this gets the character's initial position on the x-axis, and then constantly resets it to that exact position over and over and over again, so that the character can't move off of it. So what does that actually mean? Well, when we load up the game and we test it you'll notice that I can't move towards the camera or away from the camera. I'm stuck on this same axis, right? So we're getting pretty close. We almost have our side scroller. Okay. But the problem is we can move in these directions here, which is not what we want. All right. We only want to be moving left and right. So in order to move, only move left and right, we take our left stick, move... Uh, line and we're going to delete that and we're going to insert another line 
Okay. And what, what we're going to do is we're going to use our my magic line of code, which is move in direction. south at speed left stick and X all right and now what this piece of code does all right is it tells the character to always during every frame it's going to move in the direction of south okay but at speed left stick X and what does that mean well Left stick is basically, uh, it has two components to it. It's got an X value and a Y value. And the Y value goes between 1 and negative 1 as you move the stick up. Okay, as I move it up and down, if I move it up to the very, very top, it's at a full value of 1. If I move it down to the very bottom, it's at a value of negative 1. And the X is the exact same thing except left and right. Okay, so if I move the stick all the way to the right, this value will be 1. If I move it all the way to the left, it will be negative 1. And if the stick is in the exact middle, guess what? The value is 0. Okay, so what we're doing here is if I don't move the stick at all, he's going to move in direction at, well, he's going to move at speed 0. Well, speed 0 is he's not moving. Okay, if I move it all the way to the right, he's moving at speed 1. And so he's going to move in the direction of south at speed 1 right but if I move it all the way to the left he's gonna move in direction south at speed negative one well what is negative what is that how do you move in south and at speed negative one well that's moving north right that's moving the other way and so that's that's what ends up happening here all right oh look at that I got a message I'm popular <laughs> all right okay and this is very important to use this piece of code. Uh, a lot of people make the mistake of using uh, when left stick pushed right or when left stick pushed left. And when they do that, what happens is when you move the stick in a diagonal, if you move it up left or up right, um, nothing registers. And so the character just is just sitting there frozen. And it creates very, very uh, bad controls. Uh, for the players, and uh, it's not what you want, basically, is, is what it boils down to. Okay? One final thing I always like to recommend uh, when it comes to side scrollers is before you really even start this, right, what you should really be doing is taking a giant brush, right, and then just deleting all of this land, okay? Really. Do not this this doesn't go just go for side scrolls. This goes for all games. Do not leave the default land there because you're gonna be you're gonna have far fewer terrain voxels to work with. Always completely erase it. Okay? And I'm not gonna do it all here because you're gonna get bored. But completely erase it and then create the land again using a scale zero brush like so. And you should go around creating the land underneath the character like this, right? In addition to that, also, generally speaking, it's a good idea in these side-scroller games to create kind of a wall behind the character, not that far back. I mean, you put all kinds of cool scenery and details in front. Um, you know, that's kind of the idea, right? So it looks cool. Um, but don't extend this off in you know a million miles and have some vast plains in the back because number one nobody's really gonna look at it and number two it's gonna kill the performance of your game you want your game to run fast you want it to run smooth and doing that is going to drastically reduce your performance your land your terrain limit your props everything set kind of a you know medium limit you can do you know one of these kind of things where it comes up and then maybe it comes up a little bit further back and further, you know something like this at some point so that you can't see forever into the distance anyways this was been a tutorial uh, for creating side scrolls in Project Spark 
Hope you guys enjoyed it, and uh, stay tuned for more tutorials. Thank you very much.